everyone and welcome to my channel. So do you want to know my top astro tips for the year of 2023? It is going to be a great paradigm shift, you guys. Three major planets are changing sign. So this first is going to be Pluto moving into Aquarius, or uh, shall we say he just dipped his toe into Aquarius for the next year. It will give us a clue how the next 20 years Yes, that's how long Pluto will stay in Aquarius is going to unfold. Now, Saturn will move into Pisces, and that only happens uh, every two and a half years. So this transit will determine the next uh, all the way till 2026. And then Jupiter will move into Taurus, which is the sign of money and economics. Uh, we've got three Mercury retros, just as usual, but Venus unusually will go retrograde for this in the sign of Leo. And then finally, but not lastly, uh, the karmic nodes of the moon are going to change sign as well. They're going to move into Aries and Libra respectively. And that is the axis of war and peace. Yes, I'm going to make a world prediction as well about the year of 2023. But for now, let's see your personal horoscope dear Taurus. So uh, I'm using tropical astrology uh, and I want you to listen to this horoscope for your rising sign. Now, if you have the time, listen to all three of them, sun, moon and rising. Uh, but the sun aspect will talk about your career and your self-expression, whereas the moon aspect depicts more your emotional well-being, your family circumstances and your home life or perhaps your property as well. So without further ado, let's dive into it. For you, Taurus, this is definitely going to be a year of elevation and of course, expansion as well because of Jupiter. Jupiter moving into your sign and we'll get to that. But let's begin with Saturn moving into Pisces. Now, what happens when you have Saturn in Pisces on your plate? What changes on the menu for you for the years of 2023, between 2023 and 2026? And we all know that Saturn is um, the planet of karma, the lord of time, and it brings difficult days and long life lessons into the house and into the sign that moves into for the next two and a half years. And for you this time around, the Taurus is going to be your 11th house, uh, which is the house of long term goals and wishes, your tribe, your society and your benefactors. Now here, Saturn is going to test your faith and you believe in those things that I just mentioned. It will bring a variety of lessons that you need in order to move to the next phase of your life. And wherever Saturn goes, brings upheaval. When he enters the 11th house, obviously is going to do the same thing. You might end up breaking up with a lifelong friends due to incompatibility. Maybe even the first week when Saturn moves into, uh, you know, enters into your 11th house. Saturn wants to eliminate everything that is not authentic. When he comes around, he strips away fake people around you, old mates that no longer share your sense of purpose. Your friendships, your associations may be tested. And in the best case scenario, you will change your friends. Now, if you have difficulties with your friends, however, do not blame it on the stars and do not be upset with them either. It could be simply a reflection of your, of your deeper unconscious motivation uh, that is driving actually your behavior. Now, because the 11th house represents the objective truth and it is ruled by Uranus, you know, the rebellion planet. Uh, so it often seeks rebellion and Saturn may force you to rebel uh, against something that is not true to your nature and not authentic enough. Conforming is not going to be an option. Now, when Saturn enters the 11th house, he demolishes anything that doesn't have a sturdy foundation. And it will force you to rebuild those foundations because we can only build something longer lasting on a sturdy, strong foundation. And that's what Saturn wants you to do. Anything that is built on inauthenticity or a lie is going to be destructed, destroyed, and is going to leave room 
for only the things that are truly serving your purpose. And so that could mean, of course, uh, initially in the beginning of the transit as well. Uh, so I'm talking about the year of 2023 when Saturn uh, moves into your 11th house that he will remove certain groups, certain social circles, certain family members, even clubs, activities, anything that is not truly authentic, it will be removed from that area of your life. Now the challenge here is that you must have some goals and aspirations due to the 11th house energy, which is the energy of groups and humanistic uh, uh, activities, uh, that you have to have something, you should serve to a certain degree the collective to, uh, in some way. Now, it doesn't have to be in a grand scale. You don't have to become all of a sudden Angelina Jolie and, <laughs> and um, uh, adopt six children. Uh, you might, it might just involve your friends or other groups and associations that you are part of. Your, your contribution is needed and should mean something that to everyone who is involved. Uh, your contributor shouldn't be serving your own needs, but it should be serving your associates, your groups, your communities. And so you need to think about what can you offer? What gifts can you share with humanity to even to a, a smaller scale? Certain possibilities that Saturn in the 11th house uh, whilst transiting, it could be that uh, your teamwork and your group activities are going to be tested and fortified and uh, eliminated and rebuilt in a stronger foundation. Uh, you will be achieving your goals and wishes. Now, this is only if you have been working really hard for it. Now, when Saturn comes around, it will reward you. However, if you haven't done the work, then unfortunately you cannot, um, you know, you cannot count on Saturnian rewards, which are actually very good rewards. Saturn when rewards, it will give you long lasting rewards, uh, material rewards as well. Um, you know, it's not just a feeling, it's like hard material uh, achievements, um, you know, worldly achievements as well. So hopefully you have done the right work and then you will be rewarded. Sharing your knowledge and skills with others is going to be very important and to a degree activism as well. Now you need to watch out for failure and disappointment, especially with regards to your groups and communities. You need to watch out for instant karma because you know, um, everywhere a Saturn is, a Saturn always says what comes around goes around. And this time around, we are talking about, uh, as I said, your friends, groups, communities, long-term goals and wishes. You might end up bitter, having bitter breakups with friends. And you might end up also with the mindset of why does everyone hate me? That's what you need to be careful of. As I said, move Pluto, then we will move into Aquarius. And this is going to be one of the biggest change in our century, century perhaps. Pluto is a generational planet because of its slow movement. And so his effect is often felt on the collective consciousness. In Aquarius, uh, the sign of rebellion and technology, Pluto will unearth the unrealized potential of technology in the next 20 years to come. So in your personal chart, however, Pluto will dip his toe into Aquarius, which is your 10th house. And uh, it will give you a taste of how things will unfold in the house of career and your social status for the next 20 years to come the unearthing of deep truths, unfolding power issues and transformation through crisis situation will show its face in your professional area, in your work environment, uh, in your life goal, general life goal and social status, and of course your public image as well. So then in May, Mercury is going to begin its first retrograde motion in Gemini and in Taurus. And so first, um, Mercury retrograde will urge you to reflect on your values because it's happening in your second house. You may reallocate some of your finances, rethink your budget, uh, reevaluate what you hold dear in your heart. Is your self first in alignment of your value system? Do you compare yourself to others? Or do you measure your success through earning potential uh, or physical appearance, perhaps? 
maybe the combination of these two. Now, revisiting these issues will allow you to have a better sense of value that, of course, eventually will tie in with your earning abilities. Then Mercury retrograde in the area of image and physical appearance urges you to rethink how you show yourself in the world. And um, this is going to be extremely important because this will coincide with Jupiter moving into uh, your sign as well. So, uh, so then in May, Mercury is going to go retrograde first in Gemini, and then it dips uh, back to Taurus into your sign as well. So um, needless to say, this is very important for you, dear Taurus, but it's even more important because that is going to be the same time when Jupiter moves into Taurus. So let's see Gemini first. So uh, when Mercury moves back to Gemini, this is taking place in your second house. First, Mercury attribute urges you to reflect on your values. You may reallocate your finances and rethink your budget. You need to reevaluate what you hold dear in your heart. Is your self-worth in alignment with your value system? Do you compare yourself to others? Do you measure your success through earning potential or perhaps through your physical appearance? or perhaps the combination of these two. Now, revisiting these issues will allow you to, to have a better sense of value. And of course, at the end, this will tie in with your earning ability. So it's an important step, that one too. But the most important step is going to be when Mercury moves back to Taurus. And that's going to be the same time or similar time when Jupiter takes a step forward and moves into your sign, into your first house. So you have these two energies in the same time. And so it's very important that you understand that first house is about image, your physical appearance. And so Mercury urges you to rethink how you show yourself up in the world. This could be anything to do with your physical body, with your hairstyle, with the way you express yourself, uh, to your entire outlook, to your image. This area is also associated with your life path, actions, your basically your instinctual behavior. Are your actions in sync with your true calling? And of course, after this period, you will have this renewed self-confidence and a new sense of direction. So then Jupiter will move into your first house, the Taurus, and that's going to be around the time when Mercury goes uh, steps back into Taurus. So Jupiter will move into your first house on the 16th of May. And so Jupiter, when Jupiter transits the first house, the desire for growth and expansion influences how you present yourself in the world and how you take action as well. This is a start of a new cycle for the next 12 years to come. So it is a great time to begin new projects. Jupiter will expand the desire to assert yourself and get more out of life. So you're likely to have more physical energy, more wisdom, more optimism, more self-confidence. You want to do things in a big way and you may find the confidence to start something that you've always wanted to do or you've wanted to do for a while. Now, when Jupiter crosses the ascendant or transits a, a, a personal planet in your first house, this is, of course, I don't, I, I can't comment on that when that is going to happen. That's something you may have to find out for yourself by looking at your chart. Uh, you might gain insight uh, to the future. This could mean, uh, or this could come to you uh, in a form of vision or dream, and you're likely to experience them as intuitions or hunches about what's coming. You can look at the current trends in your life and see how they will unfold and how you can make the most out of the opportunities you have to hand. Now, I need to remind you at this point that uh, although Jupiter is the planet of luck, expansion, and all sorts of opportunities and big and good things in life, Jupiter will only bring opportunities for you. So if you don't try these opportunities, if you just sit 
on your butt at home, nothing is going to happen. So uh, please do keep this in mind. Jupiter in the first house bring the desire for growth and increased self-knowledge. So this is going to be a perfect time to let go of old ideas, attitude, prejudices that are holding you back. Your view to the world is expanding now and you need to grow to incorporate that new vision. You may have more spiritual and religious experiences at the time as your need for a deeper sense of meaning of life expands. You may also meet um, people from abroad or you may expand your horizons through travels and, and meeting with different cultures. Now, possibilities with Jupiter in the first house are such as uh, increased self-confidence, positive outlook and optimism in life, increased physical vitality, opportunities, and I highlight that, opportunities only to achieve your goals, vision to the future of, to the future possibilities of yours, opportunities to self-improvement as well. Now you also need to watch out for increased appetite uh, that may lead to a uh, weight weight gain if that's something negative for you it doesn't have to be necessarily and exaggerated self-importance or to a certain degree arrogance as well but these are more likely to happen if jupiter makes a 90 degree or a square aspect to one of your personal planets jupiter in the first house can help to support if you're struggling with other more challenging personal transit at the same time because purely it brings more optimism and positivity. You can learn a lot about yourself and gain new experiences and it could also be a very fortunate time to achieve more than usual and your relationships with others are going to be also very satisfying. So the nodes uh, are going to move into Aries and Libra respectively, and that is going to happen on the 13th of July. And this is going to be an 18 months long transit. So it also will affect us for quite a while. The North Node of Destiny dictates what we are moving into, which may be a scary place because we have never been there before. Uh, this is uh, our future karma. And this is uh, also a place that feels very, very unfamiliar and we might make certain mistakes. Uh, imagine yourself as a toddler uh, who keeps falling down, but uh, nevertheless, he knows that his destiny is to stand up and walk. Now the south node of the moon uh, um, or, or the south node of destiny uh, depicts a place on the other hand or an energy, emotion, or perhaps a relationship that have been part of our past life. And so therefore this is a karmic energy that we are trying to move out of, to release and to leave behind uh, during this one and a half year of transit. Now, the area of the growth is going to be the North Node or Rahu in Vedic astrology, and uh, they are going to move into our 12th, into your 12th house. Sorry, I'm not a Taurus ascendant. Uh, and, and so um, the growth, the area of the growth become the subconscious mind, the hidden talents, perhaps spirituality, or behind the scenes activity that is away from the public eye. In certain case scenarios, it could be also a faraway land that is uh, very different from your culture, and uh, it's usually over the ocean. You can improve some of your past karma uh, by being charitable, helpful, or by healing others. Now, this transit will bring, uh, you know, all the eclipses are going to happen now on this axis for those uh, one and a half years. And so we know that eclipses are usually bringing major endings and great new beginnings uh, on that axis. And this is the axis of work and rest, health and healing. Um, your everyday duties and uh, you know a place of being behind the scenes or resting or healing. Now this is more likely that it will feel fated uh, those great new endings and beginnings. Um, so as I said, these are going to feel more fated, destined. Uh, you may feel as you don't have much control over those situations. Uh, but just trust the universe because uh, universe is only putting you back. Uh, to the path that you have chosen before uh, entering this physical reality. 
You might release an illness or an enemy or a job um, or at least some of your workload you definitely will release. It's a great opportunity also to eliminate debts that you may have accumulated throughout the years. So then Venus is going to go retrograde in the sign of Leo uh, around July and the beginning of September. Venus is your ruler planet. And it's also the uh, planet of art, relationships, money. And she will go retrograde in the sign of romance and true love and children. And it is going to happen in your first house of family and property and home life. So how this may unfold for you, dear Taurus? It is going to be a significant time for you when your reality and your appearance, your life path, and your behavior can change pretty drastically and of course very unexpectedly. You might end up leaving an unhealthy relationship behind or finally confronting your unresolved trauma. A healthy relationship will face no major drama, especially if you are or your partner is very open-minded. Now Venus will square you know, so there is a big, big, big emphasis on open-mindedness um, because Venus will square Uranus nearly to the entire period of the retrograde. So that will inevitably bring a strong need for freedom uh, and a taste for the unconventional. Now, your need for the increased stimulation could be satisfied by experimentation in the bed, bedroom or outside even, but could also bring a sudden flirt or a romance that might not lead anywhere. Uh, only it will give you a sense of excitement and a sense of unconventionality that you may need during this time. The more demanding and more conservative your partner, the more likely that it will stir up uh, a trouble or you will have an affair. Venus retrograde square Uranus transit will inevitably challenge your love relationships through unexpected urges or unexpected events. An increased need for excitement can test your partner's patience and may lead to wandering eyes. So if you do lose a relationship, however, you must understand that it wasn't working in the first place. Venus retrograde does not destroy a good relationship. And you can excel now. In fact, couples in a healthy relationship often come out on the other end, or on the other end of Venus retrograde with a better sense of understanding of each other wants and needs. Now, because Venus goes retrograde in your home, home in your home environment, in your, you know, in your first house of home, property, and family, uh, it could be a time of reflections, of understanding what you want in your family relationships. Now within your family, your values might be shifting at this time. And so don't be surprised if you feel the needs to change the rules at home or take a different approach to parenting. Try new things out until you find a different approach that makes you feel secure and makes you feel comfortable. Reflect on the ways that things have always been done, but traditions can also be changed. And this might be the time when traditions will change because of the Uranus uh, square to Venus. Now, you might end up butting heads with a woman in a family, such as your mother or grandmother or cousin. But when you look back, however, at the Venus retrograde, you may feel a sense of rebirth, not only in relationship, but only a new sense of self-worth and creativity through re-establishing your bonds with your family. So then Mercury is going to go retrograde between mid-August and end of August and mid-September. And this happens in your fifth house. So your sense of pride and creative energy, your ability to enjoy life and to have fun could be withdrawn somewhat during this time. You have reached a point when you need to regain your inspiration, reignite the spark for life, to reanimate that inner child within who loves life and enjoys it to the fullest. A past connection may reappear uh, and to recapture your heart. Um, but this may happen only for the time being. Once Mercury changes direction, hearts will have changed. So don't uh, rekindle anything. 
So then the last Mercury retrograde is going to occur in Sagittarius, and that is going to uh, be between the 3rd of December and 1st of January. So for these three weeks, you need to reallocate your joint finances, your investment. It is a good time to repay your existing debts, redeploy your shared resources. It's not a good time to take out a loan or mortgage. So if that's what you want to do next year, perhaps don't time it in December. Taking a second look on how you have potentially overextended yourself will greatly benefit your assets once Mercury moves direct again. Trust issues may have surface and they are needing to be dealt with around this time or intimacy issues are also in need to be re-examined and discussed. So that was it from me, dear Taurus. I hope that you have enjoyed that. I hope that uh, this will help you plan your next year somewhat. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me. If you need anything more personal, please don't hesitate to contact me via my website. Uh, thank you for listening and for supporting my channel, with, uh, even just watching this video. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, have a lovely end of the year and, of course, a beautiful 2023. Thank you. Bye-bye.